to the people out there. My name is Automatic, and welcome to episode 5 of Engines of Union Pacific. Last time we talked about the U-50s and U-50Cs. Today we'll be talking about the next engine in line, the Alco Century 855. Now I should point out this engine, unlike the DD-35 and U-50s, this type of locomotive isn't very well documented as the other locomotives, so if this episode is a bit shorter than the other ones, that's why. Before this episode was before this episode was made, I actually set up three posts on my community page to get more answers on this engine. Now that I think I have all the answers needed about these engines, we can start the episode. So with that, let's start talking. Whoa, hold up! Sorry, but this is me talking from the future of episode 4. I just wanted to point out a painful error that I made in the last episode about the U-50s. And it's their name specification. In the episode, I realized after it finished premiering, I got the name specifications completely wrong. So I'm here to address and fix this error. U does not stand for U-boat. And actually, it stands for Universal, which makes a lot more sense as it's part of the Universal series of GE locomotives. U-Boat was only a nickname for the engines. The 50 stands for 5,000 horsepower and not Model 50. When the first two numbers match the ones in their horsepower amount, that's what it means. When they don't, they're model numbers. Alright, sorry Episode 5 me for interrupting. You can continue now. With that said, let's talk about the Union Pacific C-855. In the early 1960s, Union Pacific solicited proposals from Electromotive Division, General Electric, and the American Locomotive Company for a locomotive or locomotives capable of producing 15,000 horsepower. The three manufacturers were in a competition with each other in an attempt to construct 5,000 horsepower locomotives all for Union Pacific. EMD's entry was the GP35, DD35, DD35, GP35 set, and GE proposed with the U50 later. Alco was also up for the competition, but had to come up with a locomotive design with 5,000 or more horsepower. The units in question would be completely built from scratch, with some references from Alco's earlier units that were constructed prior to this. They soon came out with their competition, known as the Alco Century 855 in 1964. Union Pacific, like their U-50s, took an order of three units from Alco to operate on their roster. The order consisted of two A units and one B unit. The cost of the A units would each cost $544,451, and the B unit would cost $531,330, which in total would equal $1,614,232. For all three units. The delivery of the three units arrived to Union Pacific in Omaha shops on June 22, 1964, being delivered with their serial numbers as 84730 and 84731, which were the A units, and 84732, which was the B unit. When originally ordered, the units were supposed to be numbered 45, 45B, and 46. However, due to the second order of GEU 50s, this necessitated the assignment of higher numbers, and were now instead numbered 60, 60B, and 61. The units were classified as DL855 and DL856. For technical specifications, the C stood for Sentry as the engine was part of the Sentry series made by Alco. 8 stood for 8 axle trucks on the engine, and 55 stood for 5500 horsepower. The C855 was rated for a top speed of 70 miles per hour and had a dual Alco 251C prime mover as well as a dual V16 diesel engine which produced a total of 5500 horsepower. The A units weighed at a hefty 551,400 pounds while the B unit weighed 
549,860 pounds. They had a length of 86 feet, a width of 10 feet 8 inches, and a height of 16 feet and 4 and 3 quarters of an inch. The units came with an AC alternator, DC traction motors, and two times 16 cylinders. The units had 6,000 US gallon fuel tanks. They had eight traction motors with one of each on the eight axles on their trucks. And believe it or not, they're the exact same trucks as from the 4,500 horsepower turbines. <laughs> and had a tractive effort of 160,000 pounds at 10 miles per hour. To put it bluntly, these units were 500 horses more powerful than what EMD and GE created. We'll talk more about that later. The A units were fitted with comfort cabs and were equipped with all the necessary accessories and operating cab for single unit operations. Circuitry has also been applied to the A units to permit multiple unit operations with all units controlled from the cab. The cabs provided operating stations for three crew members with the engineer on the right hand side like usual, and the fireman and head end brakeman were located in Trandum on the left hand side. Access to the cab was gained through doors located on the left and right side behind the crew stations. All human comfort devices were located in the operating area. An ice chest and water cooler was available behind the cab. A toilet was in the short hood slash nose of the engine, which was accessible through a step-down entrance from the cab deck. So if you ever needed an emergency brake while on the job, you can take care of your business in the nose. <coughs> Wall heaters provided crew comfort during cold operations, while free air and fans handle cooling requirements during warm conditions. Man, when I put it like that, these units sounded like a luxury to operate. Maybe you could have even played a game of chess in your spare time while you were in one of those things. They even had windows that could allow an excellent field of view for the engine. Especially comparing them to other cabs. Especially wide cabs or high noses. The throttle on the controls also had a 16 knot stick instead of an 8 knot stick. Lastly, these units came equipped with Leslie S5T air horns. Here's a sample. When the units were put into service, they ran from North Platte, Nebraska to Ogden, Utah, hauling trains across from back to back. As I stated before, the units had a tractive effort of 160,000 pounds at 10 miles per hour, and also had a tractive effort of 60,000 pounds at 30 miles per hour. The units, with their 5,500 horsepower, allowed them to become the biggest and most powerful units ever constructed by Alco, and the most powerful units of the three competitors. They were at their best when 60, 60B, and 61 were all lashed up together. With all three together, they were able to surpass the 15,000 horsepower mark and bring it to a total of 16,500 horsepower, making them the strongest motor power on the railroad at the time. If you don't count the Gen 3 gas turbines. However, seeing them all lashed up together at once was quite the sight to see, as you wouldn't have seen it very often during their years of service, as they normally would either only be lashed up as only two units, lashed up with different units, or just travel by themselves, as was becoming a common thing at the time. Now, if you're starting to wonder why only three units were constructed and no more than that, then stick around. Unfortunately, as much praise as I'm giving these units, they sadly received a very poor reputation from operators and maintenance crews. Now, how I describe these units and how they were designed, they sound like they couldn't fail. But these units suffered one design fault, and it was their wiring. The units had aluminum wires installed, and this caused overheating and sometimes even caused electrical fires. Because of this, the units had to sit out for most of their career for maintenance repairs, 
Which is why most people claim these units were complete failures. They would usually be sidelined in favor of units that were more reliable and didn't have these problems. However, because of this, the units were restricted and limited to running from North Platte, Nebraska to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Mainly so they could be near shops for maintenance. These units and their downfall would only get worse as each year went on, and would get even worse once new locomotives arrived, and I think we all know what they are. Frankly, these units would have been lucky if they were able to make it through 10 years of service, but unfortunately, this wouldn't happen. By the late 60s, the units were reduced from freight work to occasional use, or being put into storage. It was pretty clear that Union Pacific didn't want to hold on to these units for much longer, which definitely seemed to be the case. In August of 1970, all three units were officially retired from Union Pacific. However, in September of 1971, the units were sold to the Industrial Maintenance Service Corporation in Hammond, Indiana. Thence resold and shipped to Houston Armature Works in Houston, Texas, which would mark their final resting place. One by one, they began to be cut up. Unit 60B was scrapped on December 1971. Unit 61 was scrapped on January 1972. However, 61's radiator was spared and was kept by someone for a short while for some unknown reason, but it has since been scrapped. And Unit 60 was officially scrapped on February 1972. Alco's units only saw a service that lasted for less than eight years before departing the world. However, it's possible that the units might have lasted longer had they not had aluminum wires and had copper wires installed instead and would have reduced the electrical problems they had as well as the electrical fires. Regardless, the units sadly failed and never made it to preservation. Despite the units and their flaws, they still did manage to leave a mark on the Union Pacific and will definitely be remembered by many rail fans to come. They sure did leave their mark in the Union Pacific, the Great Big Rollin' Railroad. Thanks for watching this episode of Engines of Union Pacific. I'd like to thank a dude named Andy W for helping to provide pictures and information that I needed for this episode. If you're watching this, dude, thank you so much. This wouldn't have been possible. This wouldn't have been possible without your help. Next time we'll be talking about a locomotive I think everyone knows about, the DDA40X or Centennial, whatever you like to call it. Stay tuned for that. And like last time, feel free to tell me anything I might have missed on these engines or anything else in the comment section below. Also, like last time, a community post will be put up on my channel where you can provide information on the next engine in line. Until then, stay tuned for more. Thank you everyone for watching, and with that said, this is Automatic, signing off! We're a great big rolling railroad, here the diesel engine's power. We're a thousand wheels of freight train, doing 90 miles an hour. Like a mighty rushing torrent, with the power you can feel. Surging through our nation's heartland, on a river made of steel. From the shores of California, where the blue Pacific leaves, to the father of the waters, rolling down. We have forged a span of steel that links our nation east and west. We're the Union Pacific, doing what we do the best. From New Orleans to Seattle is 3,000 miles away. Cross the rivers, plains, and mountains. And we're going there today 
We were there to bridge the rivers when our country still was new. We're the Union Pacific. We can handle it for you.